Zagreb, the political and cultural heart of Croatia. An amiable capital city located at the intersection of Central, Eastern and Southern Europe. A city that holds many memories of the Danube monarchy. We're traveling in the Upper Tarn. Zagreb originated in the Middle Ages from two rival settlements on neighboring hills. The bishop's seat of Kaptol, which is dominated by its cathedral, and the free city of Gradek, which was its political center. They both formed the city's upper town. The main square commemorates one of the nation's heroes. an equestrian monument of Ban Jelicic, who once helped put down a revolt in Budapest, but was then declared a rebel by the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The capital district has been the Catholic heart of Croatia since the Middle Ages. Almost each and every building has a story to tell. From the 15th to the 18th century, this row of buildings was inhabited by Capitulas, a wonderful, tranquil setting. This is an atmospheric place, Upper Town being a veritable treasure of the past. The cathedral dominates the capital district, its two steeples towering above the old city. Thirteen hundred years ago, the Episcopal Church maintained contact with the Holy See in Rome. Over the years, its appearance has been gradually transformed. Inside, the design of both the Romanesque and Gothic periods combine harmoniously with Neo-Gothic elements from its founding years. An angel supports the Baroque pulpit, and a Neo-Gothic main altar adorns the main nave. The two side naves possess fine altars. Behind the main altar is the sarcophagus of Bishop Stepinak. The sacristy shines out with ancient frescoes and altarpieces. A Catholic sanctuary that survived the ravages of time. The cathedral grounds and Franciscan monastery are also well worth a visit. According to legend, the cathedral was founded by St. Francis of Assisi following his return from the east, but it was actually constructed in the 13th century. This Gothic structure with its extended nave and ribbed cross vault is the original building. Magnificent stained glass windows designed by Ivo Dulcic adorn the modest chancel. Everywhere St. Francis can be seen. The Baroque side altars were partially replaced by those of Neo-Gothic design. A 
and the monastery chapel is decorated with stucco and various Baroque paintings. Close by the Tikalcheva, an old lane that is now a pedestrian zone. Next, the gardens of the area's main cafes and several historic buildings. A popular destination. The former convent of the poor Clare sisters is now a museum. In the basement, archaeology that dates back to antiquity and prehistory, including the Illyrians, Romans, Slavs and Avars. A number of paintings, models and documents trace the city's history since 1094 AD. One hostility followed another and eventually guns came into service. Until finally the two settlements became united and this cathedral city was founded. And Zagreb became the first Croatian-Slovenian capital city. Jesuits and Franciscans introduced culture and knowledge. The Croatian nobility built palaces. And the city's inhabitants busied themselves in trade and commerce. Both documents and religious treasures demonstrate this. And by the imperial patent of the Habsburgs, the upper town was combined with the lower town. The actual centre of upper town is Marcus Court with its colourful church, the city's Gothic landmark. This church was first mentioned in documents in 1256. And a market was held in its courtyard. A stone gate separates the upper town from the lower town. The last of the four town gates contains an image of Mary, which is still worshipped today and which was found following a devastating fire. A stone road leads up to the old town square, past the town hall and the city's oldest pharmacy. Although the Jesuit court has an important name, it's very small and not really of historical interest. Now an impressive fountain. In 1910, artist Simeon Roksandic created this water-spouting fisherman with snake. Lovich Palace is situated next to the square with a stone portal. Jesuit monks designed the building and also lived here. A cultural centre and various galleries located in what are today known as the Klovich Courts. Next is the narrow Catherine Square, 
with its homonymous church that was built by the Jesuits as part of their monastery complex. Following a devastating earthquake, the stone figures of four evangelists and Holy Katharina were set within a church facade. The Jesuit College and City Palace flank the square and convey the intimate atmosphere of a small town. Rivabi Mosht, the so-called blood bridge, was for centuries the natural border between the two cities and also the scene of many bloody massacres. Today the bridge no longer exists as it was subsequently built into a narrow lane. The Church of Mary was formerly situated on a creek and the Cistercians, the original builders of both church and monastery, also bathed here. After the dissolution of the order, the monastery church became a parish church and was extended with three naves and splendid furnishings. It was mainly Slovenian artists who created the 18th century statues and paintings. Unfortunately, nothing was damaged in the city's great earthquake. Next to the city centre is the vast Dolac marketplace. It contains a colourful range of products from Central and Southern Europe, including the Balkans. While visiting what is referred to as the Berry of Zagreb, vendors offer tiny delicacies. An experience of all the senses. The Stosmaya Promenade was created following the demolition of the southern city wall. Later, chestnut trees were planted and lanterns added. Seated on a bench is the poet Matos. And from here, there's a splendid view over the city's rooftops, a city that still contains many more fascinating sights. The Strossmeyer Promenade ends at Lothrichak Tower, that was built in order to protect one of the city's four gates. The view from the tower is quite remarkable, with the lower city and the buildings of the upper town. Each evening a bell was rung prior to the closure of the city gates, but now a cannon is fired promptly at 12 o'clock each day. Next, the delights of Lower Town. Since 1889, the Uspenyacha cable car has connected the Upper Town to the Lower Town, a cable car with a long tradition. This cable car was built by an Austrian company, Wagner Biro. Today it is very popular with one and all.
Now Lower Town. We explore the Elysia by tram. This busy street encircles the city and travels between the city's two main districts. It was designed by architect Milan Lanucci. He was also responsible for the design of the new city center in the late 19th century. with many bourgeois buildings. The Elicia leads to the British court, which the Zagrebians refer to as Elicia court, as it was originally named. Each Sunday there's a well-attended and unusual flea market here. Weekdays, it's a normal but quite expensive market. Flower Court in the pedestrian zone of Lower Town is framed by a beautiful church and several townhouses. In the middle, a statue of famous Croatian poet Peter Preradovic, who for many years lived in Vienna and served as a general in the Austro-Hungarian army. Inaugurated in 1895, the National Theatre dominates the centre of Tito Square. The two main architects of the K&K &K monarchy, Fellner and Helmer, created this magnificent building. Hard to imagine that this was once a swamp. The Trinje district, south of Central Station, was integrated into the city in 1927 by Mayor Heinzel. It was a time of industrialization, so many buildings were constructed for the large number of workers that were required to be accommodated. the area continued to expand. On the southwestern outskirts is the recreation area of Yarun, a paradise for water lovers. There's a small lake and canals which were formed by the Sava River. In 1987, the Universiade was held here, and since then, Zagreb Sea became a favorite weekend destination. The court of the three Marzuranich brothers is typical of Lower Town, floral tranquility. Surrounded by residential buildings, this is a green oasis. A relaxing place amid a busy city. The city's marvelous botanical garden is located in the south and contains an array of wonderful natural sights. Mm -hmm. 
10,000 tree and plant varieties grow here, including alpine, Mediterranean and the exotic. Small ponds with water plants are also included in the 4.7 hectare gardens. Maximir Park is the city's largest and oldest park, with a large main gate, several avenues and many artificial ponds. Designed in English landscape style, it seems that not only the locals like it here, but also visitors from a nearby attraction. A zoo which is located near to one of the lakes in this vast park. It contains animals from all over the world. Whether on trees or on the ground. or the banks of ponds. Spot the lions. And the bears. An imposing arcaded facade forms the entrance to the Mirogoch Cemetery. This final resting place laid out as a park is an artistic masterpiece. Here leading sculptors built tombs for the country's most famous personalities from the arts, culture and politics including the grave of Franjo Tudjman. Various avenues divide the extensive grounds, which have now become an open-air museum and one of the most beautiful cemeteries in Europe. A narrow mountain road leads up to the Medvenica Nature Park outside the city gates. The medieval Medvedgrad Fortress is a most striking and interesting attraction located in 23,000 hectares of natural landscape. This stone chapel is dedicated to Holy Philip and Yaakov. The castle was built in the urban area as a third fortification in the 13th century, a time when the Tatars attacked. strategically situated on a rock with double fortified walls and mighty gun turrets. Later ownership of the castle changed and following an earthquake it was abandoned. After the Turkish wars it was no longer required. Zagreb is a special city, unique, a never-ending story. A city that has witnessed a thousand years and due to its historic values has become a European capital of culture. <laughs>